Okay, so today we're going to look at the washer method, and hopefully you've watched the introduction video to the washer method. I like to show those because they give a great visual of what we're doing. So unlike the disk method, we use the washer method when we have a function that is not flush with the axis of rotation. So that's when we use the washer method because what happens is it produces a shape that has what we call a hole in it. So if I were to rotate whatever this shape is around the x-axis, since it's not flush with that, we have like this, it makes a hole. Because when it comes to the other side, if I could you know, possibly draw that again, which I can't, it looks something like this, and it has this hole in the middle as it's rotated. So the way this works then, I'm going to erase that because that's pretty ugly. Um, so the way that this works is we're going to take the outer function, and the outer function we call big R, and subtract the inner function, which we call little r, because what we're doing is we're, it's like we're taking all of this with big R if, as if it were flush, and then subtracting the part that's missing, little r. So it's going to be big R squared minus R squared, which is the radius of the outer function minus the radius of the inner function. And again, we do this when it's not flush with the x-axis. Um, and again, just like we've done in the others, we do this in respect to x if we're rotating it about a um, horizontal axis, but if we're rotating about a vertical axis, then everything would be in terms of y. So the, the key is to notice the difference between the disk method and the washer method, which one to use. So once again, if it's not flush with the axis, we use the, disk, uh, the washer method. So let's do our first example together. You have uh, y is equal to the square root of x and y is equal to 1. And it's also bounded by x equals 4. So when we bound it by x equals 4, that's a vertical line, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a vertical line, and so it's bounded by y equals 1. That is this horizontal line, and y is the square root of x. So the function that we get that we're rotating is this function. It's this region. It's this region, okay? So let's get some values here. This x value would be... Uh, when y is 1, x is also 1. So that first y value is 1, and of course this is 4. So we're going to integrate from 1 to 4. And don't forget your dessert. Okay, so the outer radius is the one furthest from the axis of rotation. This is my axis of rotation. So the outer radius is the um, square root of x because it is furthest from my axis of rotation. So in this case, r squared is going to be the square root of x. Then the inner function is the one closest to the axis of rotation. In this case, the inner function is actually y equals 1 is going to be my inner radius. And because it is a horizontal axis, everything's in terms of x. So we would just integrate this. We get pi 1 to 4 of x minus 1, which gives us x squared over 2 minus x integrated from 1 to 4. Don't forget your dessert. So 4 squared is um, 16. 16 minus 4 is, I'm sorry, 16 divided by 2 is 8 minus 4, and this would be 1 half minus 1. And I don't have a calculator, so you can figure that out on your own, but that would be your answer. Okay? Let's look at the second example. Now, this time we're rotating at about the y-axis. And because we're rotating at about the y-axis, everything has to be in terms of y. Also, notice that um, that's a typo in your notes. That should be x squared. It is x squared in your notes, I think. 
Okay, so we have y equals x squared, which is the red function, and y equals 2x, which is the blue function. And we're rotating it about the y-axis. So the first thing I notice is that everything has to be in terms of y. So I have to solve for x. So if I have y equals x squared, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. Now, because I'm in the first quadrant, I only have to look at the positive value of that because I'm, I'm above the x-axis. So I know it's not plus or minus, it's just plus. The second one, we have y equals to 2x. Solving for x, I get y over 2. So these are going to be the function, and it's in terms of y because I am doing a vertical axis of rotation. So which one will be my outer function? Well, which one is furthest from the axis of rotation? The one that's furthest from the axis of rotation is the square root of y. And then the inner function is the one that's closest to the um, axis of rotation, which in this case would be uh, y over 2. So pi times the integral, let's talk about limits in a second. So the outer radius, the one furthest from the x-axis, is the square root of y minus the one um, closest to the axis of rotation, which is y over 2. These values have to be y values. So this y value here is 0, and this y value is 4. And again, if the picture wasn't drawn, we could get that by setting them equal to each other. So and we're doing this with respect to y. So once again, I am not going to do this out. I'm just going to get 0 to 4 of y minus y squared over 4. And that's pi y squared over 2 minus y to the third over 12. Evaluate it from 0 to 4. Okay? And you can figure out what that is. Okay, so this one we want to revolve about the x-axis. And again, this is x squared plus 1. So we're revolving this about the x-axis. Which function is furthest from the axis of rotation? The linear function is. So this will be pi. We'll talk about the limits later. And the one furthest from the axis of notation is the linear function. The one closest is the quadratic function. And now when you talk about our limits of, of um, our limits will go from here to here. And again, these would be x values. And if I couldn't see these because they're graphed, I would just set these equal to each other. So I have x squared plus 1 equals negative x plus 3. So I get x squared plus x minus 2. That came up again. So this is x plus 2, x minus 1. So this should be x equals um, negative 2 and x equals 1. And I've just set that up and that should be squared as well. Okay? So once again, you can multiply that out. I'm not going to do that because you could do that. The biggest thing I want you to be able to do is to set them up. Okay? Let's do a next example. We are going by, we're rotating about the x-axis. And so to do this about the x-axis, once again, the square root of x is furthest from the axis of rotation, and the linear function is closest to the axis of rotation. So we have pi, um, where we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, looks like from 0 to 4, and it would be the square root of x squared minus 1 half x squared dx. Okie dokie. And then, again, you can set that up. Now, I have to do two other problems with you that are not in your notes. So you want to take a moment to write this down. So it's going to be rotating the area y equals x to the fourth and y equals 1. But now it's rotated about y equals 2.
So the difference about this is that I'm not rotating it about the X or the Y axis. So in this case, I have, I don't know why I do that one and not this one, but my area is bounded by this region. It's bounded by this region. And it's being rotated over Y equals 2. So the only thing different about this is that I now have to subtract my axis of rotation because my big R is going to be from 2 to this parabola. Okay? So it's the distance between the parabola and 2. So 2 is on the top. This would be pi. 2 is on the top. So I always do top minus bottom squared minus, now my inner radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to this boundary. So now that would be 2 minus 1 and all of this with respect to x. Now, because we're squaring it, yes, you would get the same thing if you did x to the fourth minus 2, but again, I would take off a point because you need to know it's top minus bottom. Okay? So this gives us pi. We could multiply that out. Is that x to the fourth? So that will be 4 minus 4x to the eighth. Okay, I just did some whole new math there. Sorry. That would be 4x to the fourth. minus or plus x to the eighth minus 1. Okay? And then, of course, you can integrate that. My biggest thing here is that you can set them up. All right, last one that we're going to add. Again, this is an additional problem. Please make sure you write it down. We're rotating y equals x squared x equals y squared, but this time we're rotating it about x equals negative 1. So if this is x equals negative 1, that is a vertical line somewhere over here. So that means that everything has to be in terms of y. Okay? So that means here I have to say this is x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. Once again, since it's in the first quadrant, quadrant I can just do x is equal to the square root of y. Um, this one is already in terms of y, x equals y squared. So I don't have to do anything to that. Okay? So, um, which one is which? x equals to the square root of y is the blue one, and x equals y squared is the red one. No, that's not right. y equals x squared is, this is y equals x squared, and this is x equals y squared. Okay, so x, e, this is x is equal to the square root of y. So it is furthest from the axis of rotation. So I'm just going to kind of draw that. It is furthest from the axis of rotation, so that would be big R. Little r would be the one closest to the axis of rotation. This would be little r. Okay? And the distance here would be right minus left. So this distance, pi, don't forget your dessert, we'll talk about limits in a minute, would be um, square root of y, because we can write this as square root of y minus negative 1. So this would be the square root of y minus negative 1. All of that squared. Minus the inner radius would be y squared minus negative 1. And all of that squared, dy. We can clean that up. Yes, we can definitely clean this up and do pi, the square root of y plus 1 squared minus y squared plus 1 quantity squared, dy. And, of course, you can now use your um, calculator to integrate that, or you can multiply it out, whichever you prefer. Oh, we didn't do our limits.
So we can see here that this is zero, and we're doing y value, so y is one. Again, if this hadn't been drawn for us, we would set these two equal to each other and find the limit. Okay? So I think that's it for disk and washer. Let's just recap everything we learned. We want to use the washer method when the solid is not adjacent to the axis. And then it's the curve furthest from the axis minus the curve closest to the axis. If there's an axis of rotation, if the axis, axis of rotation is vertical, we integrate with respect to y. If it's horizontal, we integrate with respect to x. And the best way to get good at these is to practice, practice, practice. So please bring your textbook tomorrow to class, and we're going to practice our little hearts out. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.